This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9 FM. Now we'll call a meeting to order. Um, welcome to the January 20th, 2020 meeting of the Eau Claire Plan Commission. We're glad uh, everyone could make it. So uh, just a couple announcements before we get started. This meeting is being broadcast live by Valley Media Works on Charter Channel 994, WRFP LP 101.9 FM and online at valleymediaworks.org. The Plan Commission attempts to conduct its public hearings in a relatively informal man manner with the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and businesslike fashion. We give the applicant an opportunity to speak first and then others either for or against the proposal <coughs> are each permitted to speak once. We do request that everyone restrict their comments to the issues before us avoid unnecessary repetition, repetition and be prudent in the use of time. We want to be sure that we have adequate time to review and discuss all items with equal diligence. Please remember to turn your cell phones off or on silent during the meeting. If you do wish to speak at a public hearing <coughs> item, there are uh, yellow slips of paper in the back. If you could fill that out, hand it to Mr. Petrie who's up in front and then introduce yourself at the microphone with your name and address. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five items for public hearing. The rest are public discussion. And um, for the, I'll let the commission know here that items seven through 14 are all related to the same development project. If it's okay with everybody, we will have one presentation for the, those items and then uh, take each of them one at a time for a vote. <clears throat> but you will be allowed to speak on, on each of the items uh, for those on the commission. So with that, we'll start with item number one, which is a public hearing for recommendation to the city council regarding an amendment to the general development plan at Southtown Business Park, 4203 London Road. and. 2715 Damon Street. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Again, uh, before this evening, is a request to amend the current general development plan for Chippewa Valley Eye Clinic uh, for their expansion and reconstruction and to approve the final plat for what, what is known as Southtown Business Park 2. Uh, it's located at the intersection of London Road and Damon Street, number one on the overview map there at the bottom right. Here more specifically, the uh, area <laughs> under consideration, as you can see here, the property is currently zoned C3P. Uh, that would be the proposed zoning as well, but with a amended general development plan as part of the overlay. Here's an aerial photo of uh, the site um, prior to the uh, unfortunate um, fire a uh, short time ago. Uh, again, the applicant was uh, intending to uh, pursue expansion and renovation uh, prior to that. Uh, as you know, I'll be moving forward with a full reconstruction uh, instead. Uh, with that, um, again, the building was uh, originally constructed in 1999. Uh, the expansion here and reconstruction now uh, incorporate City of Eau Claire property designated as excess land. That's the uh, London Road address on the list there. It's the bottom right or southwest part of the uh, outline, yellow outlined area. Showing more specifically here, this is before you and then uh, the City Council uh, for their approval uh, back in November. Uh, this is essentially at the end, you can kind of see here a bit more clearly, uh, this is at the north end of the City of Eau Claire Stormwater Detention Facility. So as such, the applicant uh, also proposes to combine and reconfigure existing lot lines. Again, you can more clearly see here. Into a two lot, 4.47 acre final plat. Again, that's, this is the Southtown Business Park 2. See that here, 
more specifically in the dashed lines showing some of the existing uh, property boundary boundaries, but the solid lines showing the uh, proposed uh, boundaries for that final plat. Uh, again, this was originally approved as uh, Southtown Business Park back in 1997. Uh, final site plan will need to be reviewed at a later date by the Planning Commission. So again, this is uh, technically a rezoning because it's modifying the P portion of the C3P uh, rezoning or zoning category. And the area in question, yellow highlighted there, is about 1.5 acres. Uh, the total platted area with the two lots through that reconfiguration just shy of 4.5 acres. So with that, I'll leave it on this drawing, I think is a little bit more uh, appropriate. With that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, any questions from the commission? Mr. Peterson. Do you know why they're um, looking at two lots of the 4.47 acres? rather than just one big lot. It shows a little more clearly here. Uh, good question. I might defer the applicant in terms of the future plans for this. Uh, one of the lots is lot one, and I say, should say two lots. It's really lot one is the, what you see here in the yellow outline. Lot two is essentially, or is actually an out lot one. So I say a two lot subdivision where it's really lot one and out lot one. And that's again the remnant of the stormwater pond shown here, where it's labeled as stormwater pond. Yeah, it's hard to see on this drawing. Apologize, and even in the uh, the submittal, it's a little bit scaled down. But you can see here the uh, kind of southwest of the yellow outline. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, that would be outlot one, and then the yellow outline is lot one. So it is a two lot subdivision, but really just one lot for the uh, proposed development in question here. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Granlund. I, I think the text that was distributed made it sound like there were two lots of the same size, not just one total amount of 4.4 4. 4 acres. It was sounded like there were two lots of equal size each of them for over four acres. And I think that was oh, the okay. point of confusion. I see. Is there a little bit in the text just sounded like it was the other way around? Sure. But there are two lots that comprise the total area. Correct. And one of them is the outlot for the for the Correct. And the and part of it was the transferred lot from before. Okay. That's correct. Again, I apologize for any confusion there. Uh, again, I think the Kind of squint hard, you can kind of see the, uh, you know, both are slightly trapezoidal in, in shape. Uh, one is uh, certainly larger than the other, and that have been my uh, poor math as well. But yes, in total, both lots uh, equal 4.47 acres, yes. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Peterson. That yellow lot is about 2.7 acres, and the Correct. other is the 1.7 acres to make up the 4.47, but it didn't say what was the other half of the 4.47 acres. Correct. So it is the, the westerly one next to London Road, south of the one in yellow then. Correct. In terms of buildable lots, we really are just left with the one buildable lot, lot one, okay. where the uh, proposed uh, development is considered. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any final questions? I see none. Thank right. you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Welcome. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeremy Scow. I'm the land surveyor uh, with Real Land Surveying. That did, uh, I guess, is responsible for the the plat you see in front of you. I wanted to see if anybody else had any further questions about um, the surveying or planning portion of this. I see none. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone who came to the meeting tonight to speak on this item? Any member of the public who wishes to speak? All right. Is there a motion to approve this? 
Mr. Peterson. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Granlund. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes. Congratulations. Item number two is a public hearing for recommendation to the City Council on the, uh, let's see, to recommend approval of a comprehensive plan amendment and to recommend approval to rezone property from P to C3P at uh, State Road Highway 37. Mr. Allen. Thank you again, Mr. Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, as noted, yes, this is a request to amend the 2015 Eau Claire Comprehensive Plan for property located at W3380. It's also been listed elsewhere as N3380, uh, State Road 37 or Highway 37. You can see there's item number two, uh, essentially a, a bit of an island there, southwest uh, part of the city. Uh, to change the land use designation from what is listed as school to commercial, Again, those are uh, copies of plan designations. Uh, also to rezone the property from P public to C3P. And thirdly and finally to adopt the general development plan with a final site plan for the plumbers union. You can see here this is a little bit better map I think in terms of uh, general location. Uh, you can see the property is uh, essentially in two at this point. When you last saw this uh, back in June, it was uh, one large parcel uh, before it was annexed into the city. So the current property owner, Plumbers and Steamfitters UA Local 434, uh, can be also referred to as uh, Plumbers Union or Local 434, uh, has requested to amend the comprehensive plan uh, for the 10.99 acres of land at this location. Again, the applicant's also looking to rezone the property as a result from P public to C3P and to approve a general development plan to change the use of the property and the formal, former school, see here the little red school, uh, to be used for the union offices, meeting rooms, classrooms, and training spaces. Uh, the applicant's offices are currently located on Ridge Road. Uh, further within uh, city limits. Uh, the property was annexed into the city of Eau Claire as a non-contiguous parcel in June of this last year uh, when it was still owned by the city of Eau Claire and a predecessor to the Eau Claire Area School District. The property was then formally transferred to the Eau Claire Area School District who subsequently sold it in two parcels. Uh, one to the property owner to the east as vacant land, about 22.8 Eight O acres, you can see here's parcel B. And the other contained the school and its immediate grounds, 10.99 acres more or less to the applicant before you this evening. Applicant requested the plan commission at its meeting uh, back on November 18th to initiate hearings and public review process for the comprehensive plan amendment. And this is the first of those such hearings. Uh, as noted in the staff reports, uh, the comprehensive plan plan new Land use map currently identifies the site as being appropriate for the existing school. Let you come back to that here. To the, uh, which is the blue you see there. To the uh, south and west, shown as low density housing. That's the yellow. Uh, with park being designated to north and east, that's the green. Essentially the parcel B uh, shown back on this drawing. Uh, Included in the staff report as well are the criteria listed in the comprehensive plan to be considered when reviewing a plan amendment. I uh, wanted to highlight a few of those, uh, numbers two, three, and five, that are of particular interest to note. Again, they're not exclusive for your review here this evening, but uh, one's more particularly related to this proposal. Uh, number two essentially states the change does not create an adverse impact on public facilities and services that cannot be mitigated. Number three, development resulting from the change does not create an undue impact on surrounding properties. Number five, the change does not have a significant impact on the natural environment. Uh, regarding the rezoning, the proposed C3P zoning is consistent with similar uses in the 
community, uh, C3 District allows for a variety of commercial office uses, um, much more than just the plumbers union and the offices uh, proposed. But the uh, plan development or the P designation uh, narrows the allowed uses to those as presented by the applicant. Uh, they included a narrative uh, with their application, which includes uh, their proposed uses, along with the drawing here, shows a little bit more of the layout of the existing school. Uh, so some of these include administrative offices, classrooms for training apprentices and journey workers, industrial rigging training, and a welding lab. Uh, no manufacturing or industrial uses are planned, nor any retail or other commercial endeavors. The applicant indicates no exterior changes are planned, with the exception of a garage door loading dock into the welded shop area. So here's the current uh, or the most current uh, aerial photo showing the layout. Again, matching that. It's probably flipped around actually uh, with the main entrance flipped around. But uh, again, this is showing the current conditions. Applicant is proposing no exterior modifications beyond uh, installation of a garage door loading dock. Again, the applicant did uh, provide a narrative of their proposed uses along with uh, that basic layout within the existing school building. Existing parking, as you see here, uh, appears to be sufficient for the proposed uses. So with that, I park on this drawing here just showing the overall layout and location. Uh, with that, again, the applicant is going through comprehensive plan amendment request, rezoning, and the general development plan with site plan. I'll stand for any questions. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Hammer? Thank you. All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? Welcome. Good evening. My name is Greg Erickson, and I'm a business agent with Plumbers and Steamfitters Local 434. Okay. And Anything I think it was pretty well covered by Mr. Allen on what our plans were for the building. Okay. Any questions from the commission? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any member of the public who came to speak on this item tonight? <clears throat> Anyone come to speak on uh, this item? All right. Uh, we'll see if there's a motion on the commission to move this. Mr. Granlund. I'll move approval. Thank you. Mr. Wolf Grant. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call a question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Congratulations. Item number three is a public hearing for recommendation to the City Council regarding rezoning from RM to RMP uh, 318 Elm Street. Mr. Petrie. Good evening, thank you Mr. Chairperson. Uh, before you tonight is a rezoning uh, with the general development plan and site plan. Uh, the request is to rezone from RM to RMP and to adopt the site plan that's a six unit per apartment proposed at 318 Elm Street. Just north of downtown on your screen is number three. The current zoning is RM. You may remember rezoning that from I-2 to RM uh, uh, last year. The applicant requested that for the closing of the property, the city of Eau Claire used to be the owner of this property. To the north is the old brewery, which is zoned currently I-2. Uh, to the west is a uh, sheet metal factory currently. Uh, across the street is a mixture of multifamily and single family, currently zoned RMP. And then to the east is also zoned RMP. Here's a uh, zoning map uh, showing the uh, radius, which we notified. We also put a public sign out there within 300 feet of the property. Currently, this site is vacant uh, as shown on the screen. The applicant is proposing this site plan for this development before you tonight. It is a six unit pro uh, proposed. Um, the sale of the property was authorized by the city council in November of 2018. Um, 
the applicant is proposing the six unit apartment uh, with attached garages off the back. Uh, the reason why this is a planned development is to allow a little more flexibility within the site. You may notice on the site plan, the setback along Elm Street is uh, less than 20 feet. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it's before you tonight as a planned development. Uh, the applicant is proposing four one bedrooms and two two bedrooms. The building is approximately 6,700 square feet. Again, each of the units having a two car garage. Uh, in order to allow for that two-car garage tonight and the council next week, the plan commission will have to make a recommendation to allow it to be at a 15-foot setback. Also, they're proposing some porches along the front of Elm Street as proposed in this elevation, which do encroach into that 15-foot. A typical RM zoning is a 20-foot setback. This reduction will allow for off-street parking behind the building, as I mentioned, in the garages. 12 stalls are proposed total. Also to incorporate the design and porches and garages, the applicant is seeking to increase the maximum lot coverage uh, over 40%, which is allowed in, uh, or within the RM district, 35% of the lot is a maximum. The grass area and landscape area is proposed at 30% of the lot, as noted on the site plan. Staff is asking for a calculation of open space within that. As per, as per the multifamily design manual, the site plan shows multiple connections from the public sidewalk to the building. Four of the units are accessed off Elm, two are accessed off the side, one actually, actually, actually off, a, accesses off of North Barstow Street. As part of the multifamily design manual adopted by City Council in 20, uh, December of 2019, which was reviewed by this commission as well, the proposed access is, pro as proposed, the access of the garage is preferred on the rear of the building, not showing, uh, not having the large garages actually along the street. Also attached in your packet is the building elevations for the property. Um, these are the, the south would be facing Elm Street, the north would be facing the brewery, and then also the two side elevations, which are showing the entrances off of those units. Attached in your packet also is a narrative and site plan, floor plan for the proposal. The bicycle parking is allowed in the garages. They are proposing street trees and foundation plantings. Exterior lighting should be in compliance with the city standards. The comprehensive plan notes this as appropriate for medium to high density residential. The uh, staff believes the zoning request is consistent with the comprehensive plan, the neighborhood plan, and also the zoning ordinance. This agenda item will be proposed uh, going forward at the city council meeting on January 27th. The Neighborhood Association North Riverfronts Neighborhood has uh, met on this item and I got an email this afternoon confirming that they are okay with the design and appreciate the development within the neighborhood. They did note that uh, the last new development was a single family home that was built last year, but before that they haven't had much development uh, as a new development within the neighborhood. Attached in your packet also is the uh, engineering report. With that, I'd be standing for any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the Commissioner Peterson? I know it's a discussion here on active open space. What exactly is active open space? Active open space is open space that's not within the setback of the property. So within 20 feet of that property, there should be some green area for the residents to use to occupy. On this site, it is very limited because they're on two corners, but at then another part of the plan development, the plan commission and council can approve it as shown. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Good evening. I'm Jason Krippentrug with Elm Ozone LLC. Matt Anderson, also with Elm Ozone. Do you have anything to add? Uh, we're actually pretty excited about the project, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's, it's an area that's in, in dire need of, of, some, of, of some new development. Uh, we actually just picked our name for the project yesterday. It's going to be called Walters Flats, in tribute mm -hmm. to Walters Brewery and what uh, used to be known as the Northside Flats. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? 
Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Uh, is there any member, member of the public who came to speak on this item tonight? Anyone wish to speak? All right. Uh, is there a motion from the commission? Mr. Seymour. Thank you. So moved. <coughs> Commissioner Peterson. I'll second it. Great. Thank you. Any discussion? I see none. We'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Congratulations. Item number four is a public hearing for recommendation to the City Council regarding an amendment to tax incremental district number eight. Mr. Wenzens. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, welcome, uh, or good to see you this evening, members of the Plan Commission. Uh, before you is a proposed amendment. Uh, this would be amendment, uh, the fourth amendment actually, to tax incremental district number eight. Uh, uh, this district is located uh, in the Central Business District, uh, runs along the Chippewa River uh, from uh, Lake Street uh, all the way up to the High Bridge. Um, and you can see that really it uh, bumps out within the uh, North Barstow area. Um, uh, most of the uh, redevelopment activities that have been occurring in the North Barstow area, uh, Phoenix Park, JAMP, RCU, uh, the, uh, the apartment buildings along uh, Phoenix Park are all located within the uh, North Barstow um, area and within uh, Tax Incremental District uh, number, um, number eight. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is twofold. Uh, first, uh, the first purpose is to add as an eligible cost within the project plan uh, developer incentives. Uh, we have been uh, marketing uh, various lots within the uh, remaining uh, undeveloped lots within uh, tax incremental district number eight for about four years now. And uh, pretty much every proposal that we received uh, has included a request for some form of a development incentive. So it's becoming increasingly clear to us, it might take four years, but uh, uh, beating us over the head, that uh, development incentives um, uh, are likely going to be necessary in order for these, uh, these lots to redevelop. Uh, the second purpose of this amendment is to extend the maximum life of this district by three years. Uh, state statutes prescribe that the maximum life of a uh, blight uh, tax incremental district, which this is, are 27 years. Uh, it also provides that the district can be extended, the life of the district can be extended by up to three years on approval by the Plan Commission, City Council, and the uh, Joint Review Board. Uh, we're requesting this extension because uh, if we are in a position where we need to give out development incentives and spend more, uh, uh, increase the expenditures for that purpose, we need additional years in order to be, re be able to recover uh, those, uh, those project costs. So the sites within uh, Tax Incremental District that we're talking about uh, particularly uh, include what we refer to as uh, Block 7. Uh, block 7 is uh, the, the block that's uh, essentially a, a parking lot right now to the northwest, or excuse me, northeast um, of, the, uh, of the parking structure that was built uh, in this area. Uh, that is an entire city block, and uh, as of right now, we don't have any active uh, uh, projects uh, proposed for that particular site, um, but the, uh, it, and it is owned by the Redevelopment Authority, but they are in the, in the process of continuing to talk to developers about, about that. Uh, second site um, is the liner site. Uh, that is the site that's immediately to the uh, east of the parking structure, on the same block as the parking structure. Uh, we are currently uh, have a memorandum, memorandum of understanding uh, with a private developer to build a restaurant and, um, uh, and office uses at that location, uh, as well as uh, discussions with the uh, Children's Museum about locating uh, a, immediately adjacent to that. Um, don't believe at this point that any development incentives will be necessary for that project to, to proceed. Uh, the third lot that we're talking, uh, talking about, and we have a memorandum of understanding uh, with Merge Development Corporation is for what we refer to as the railroad lot. This is the parking lot uh, along the Eau Claire River immediately behind 
um, uh, Galloway Grill and other businesses uh, along, Galloway, along Galloway Street. Uh, we are uh, in active negotiations with them for um, a uh, mixed-use development, including a restaurant, bank, and uh, housing uh, on the upper stories of that particular development. Um, it is likely that that project will uh, require some sort of a development incentive, although the specifics of that are still, uh, still under negotiation. So staff is recommending uh, that the uh, plan commission uh, approve uh, the amendment to tax incremental district uh, number eight uh, and forward it to the uh, city council with a uh, positive recommendation. Be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Mr. Winzens. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. At the end of a TIF district, the, the, the taxes that the city is collecting to recoup their investment in the properties then goes back to the city, county, uh, school board, et cetera. <clears throat> With the properties that already developed in that TID, let's say RCU, JAMF, the apartment buildings to the north, would their taxes go to the other governmental entities at the end of 2027, or would they be extended to 2030 also? No, they would be extended to 2030 also. So as long as the, the district, the life of the district would continue to exist until 2030, and all of the tax increments from um, all of the overlying taxing just jurisdiction would continue to go into this district to pay the eligible project costs. Okay, and then I have one thing in the wording of the resolution in the second paragraph where it says, we're in an amended project plan has been prepared and indicates cash grants may be made by the city of owners, lessees, and developers. Do you mean two, two owners? owners? Okay. Thank you. So I would advise that change. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Wolfgram. I have two clarification questions and a few comments. Is that, is that all right with you? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Winzens. Uh, let's reserve comments. I'm sorry. Can we reserve comments to the comment section of the process here? Or? Sure. All right, thank you. So my first question, my clarification, is the one-year TID extension that's usually targeted for affordable housing, is that rolled into this three-year state extension? No, that would be beyond uh, that. If the city council decided um, at that time to extend the life of this district, <clears throat> Uh, by a year and the proceeds to be used for affordable housing, it would be beyond that. What, what Commissioner Wolfgram is referring to is statute, state statutes allow uh, the life of a district uh, to be extended for one year um, and the proceeds of that extension, any tax increments that accrue during that time uh, to be used for, can be used for affordable housing and that's at the discretion of the city council. Uh, just for your information, if that were, were to happen, I believe the district at that time would be spinning off about a million and a half dollars a year. Thank you. Then my second question, um, in the first bullet point of the proposed amendment, can the cash grants also be extended to homeowners who would like to rehabilitate their homes? Is that possible? Um, Well, when we, when we when we created the the Water Street TID, we included very specific language in that district for that activity. I don't believe that language is included in this plan um, that would allow that to happen. Um, the cash grants to developers um, are a um, a different authorized uh, project expenditure than uh, rehabilitation activities. Mm -hmm. So I. You know, the, off the top of my head, I believe that an, the answer would be no, that those would not be included uh, within the language of this amendment. Okay. I have comments, but I'll wait. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Winsens? Thank you. And the city of Eau Claire is the applicant, right? Yes. Okay. Are there any members of the public who came to speak on this item tonight? Welcome. 
Good evening on this day of service as we commemorate the life and work of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. My name is Judy Mosley and I live at 2230 Trimble Street here in Eau Claire. Tonight I wish to address the amendment to TID 8, in particular the addition of cash grants to developers. I do believe that if the City of Eau Claire wants to provide incentives to developers of mixed use and mixed income residential developments, cash grants are an important tool. As we have seen in our city in the last 18 months, there are developers who have the experience and the desire to bring these sorts of developments to our community. At least four of them have applied for WIDA 9% tax credits in order to make those developments happen. In all of those cases, without that program and additional incentives like TID and cash grants, those developments probably won't happen because there is such steep competition from large urban communities like Milwaukee and Madison that most of those WIDA grants end up going to developers that are taking place in those communities. The chances of them happening, even in an urban environment like we have, is much, much smaller. It's a, it's a much larger bar to jump through. So we know that developers can't just absorb these costs. The way it, it works in our economy these days, the costs go up, the developers has to have to pass that on in the form of additional rent. So that means affordability falls away altogether. I support cash grants for developers of affordable units. Unfortunately, this amendment does not include any language about affordability. And the original 2002 TID proposal and the subsequent prior three amendments didn't include any recognition of the special need for affordability in this neighborhood. Over 35 years ago, I lived in a rental unit on Forest Street. I was a divorced mom of small children. I was living on Pell Grants and my student loans while I was going back to college. I and my neighbors all lived in abject poverty, scraping together the rent each month with a lot of effort. But in the 1980s, you could do that with a little bit of help from family and maybe some support of public programs like food stamps, you could still make the rent. I doubt that that's true for any of the families that are living in residential housing in this neighborhood today. Part of the problem is that over the last 35 years, we have torn down dozens, if not hundreds, of units of affordable housing in this neighborhood. And we haven't replaced any of them. So I urge you to make this neighborhood a priority. With careful planning and consideration of affordable housing availability, we can prevent further gentrification in this neighborhood and we can contribute to the revitalization of the neighborhood. I would like you to consider requiring that the TID amendment contain similar language as was included in TID 13 just across the river. Require that a health impact study be done as happened in TID 13 require that in return for cash grants, developers include affordable units in their mix. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Thank you. Did anyone else come to speak on this item tonight? Any other members of the public come to speak? All right. Uh, so we will uh, entertain motion at this point and then we'll have discussion once it's on in front of us. Do we have a motion from the commission? And by the way, uh, just a prior notice here, the mo mover and the seconder, we're gonna ask to, to stay long enough just to sign the, the actual motion before we go tonight at the end. So with that knowledge, Commissioner Seawar. Thank you. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Commissioner Granlund. All right. Is there discussion? Commissioner Wolfgram. Thank you, Chairperson Larson. So when I read the objectives of TID 8 on page 2, the language does appear to support a gentrification process and not a revitalization process. There does not appear to be consideration 
of the economic impact of redevelopment on this area of working poor. The demographics appear to be similar to the TID 13 district described as 50 plus percent blighted. This area would benefit from the same kind of health impact survey that was conducted for TID 13 so that we have the evidence of a high concentration of income insecure residents who would run the risk of displacement with redevelopment. Unless similar to TID 13, that there was intentional language added, as was done with TID 13 project plan to ensure that affordability would be considered moving forward. So I do want to support this amendment, but could only do so if language were included in the amendment that was similar to the TID 13 language that was added, such as, quote unquote, the creation and or rehabilitation of affordable housing will be a priority when administering said cash grants. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Greger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm compelled by this idea as well um, to try to find ways to, to add more into this amendment that would um, be able to help assure some affordability considerations. I guess maybe if staff could perhaps provide some perspective on, the, on how that could be done within a reasonable timeline and, and also give some perspective on what kind of timeline we're, if we're in some sort of time crunch with this as well, um, in terms of this needing to be voted on today at plan commission versus in two weeks or something. I think that this district is a little bit, no, actually a lot different than uh, Tax Incremental District 13 that we talked about before. Um, and and when, we, when we talked about that related to, to um, the ability to include that type of language. Um, this district has cr is, is existed uh, since 2002. We have, we, um, being the city, has spent um, a large amount of, uh, of uh, has spent a large amount of dollars within this district creating Phoenix Park, relocating utilities, um, uh, doing environmental remediation. Um, and as a result of that, this district is in a position where without, without substantial additional development, it will not break even at the end of its life. And this district is very limited, therefore, in, um, in, the, in the project, uh, the additional project expenses that it can take on in order to break even. And so let me give, let me give you just a little bit of an example. Um, we, uh, we, the RDA, uh, received a proposal on Block 7 for four um, apartment buildings um, that would have a value, I believe that pro proposal um, had a value guarantee of $25 million. These would have been apartments that have a rent that's higher than almost any other apartment within the city of Eau Claire. That developer still needed $4 million in developer incentives in order to make that project cash flow. Obviously, we couldn't do it. I mean, we, we can't provide that dollar amount of incentives in order to make, because we just don't have it within the district. This amendment is for a little bit over $2 million. So the reason I give that example is if we start putting in place requirements that rents be lower that decreases the developer's cash flow, which 
in turn increases the amount of assistance that they need in order to make that project financially feasible. So now you take a, a project that needed a $4 million uh, incentive package that we couldn't afford, and now it's a six or a $7 million um, gap, in, gap in their financing. And so that's the position that we find ourselves in in this district, and that's why this district is different than, than Tax Incremental District 13, because 13 is a brand new district. We haven't spent all of this money um, improving the district. Um, so I guess that, you know, you asked for my perspective, that's my perspective on this district, is that it's not in a position at this point in time with limited life remaining um, in, in, to be able to add what would be necessary uh, in terms of project costs in order to be able to provide those, um, those developer incentives to get the value that we need to make the district break even. It becomes almost like a vicious circle um, because projects that are, the, the, the value of um, apartment buildings is determined by um, the cash flow uh, that the developer is able to generate, which is a function of the rents. And so the lower the rents, the lower the cash flow, the lower the value, which means less tax increment coming into the district. So it ends up, like I said, kind of being almost this vicious circle at this point um, where, um, you know, in some senses, we'd almost be better off letting these parcels, the li not, not the liner site necessarily, but block seven, sit vacant. I mean, the last thing we want to do is put more dollars into it than we're going to get back out of it uh, from a from a financial from a financial standpoint, so I wouldn't recommend um, including that type of language in this district. It just at this point in time, it really just doesn't fit. To get to your question specifically, um, Commission Member Gregor, um, we are in active negotiations with uh, with a developer on the railroad site. Um, they have made a specific ask. Uh, we um, you know, we haven't, you know, accepted that ask. We're still negotiating with them. But that developer is going to need some assurance pretty soon that um, that district, is, this district is going to be amended to allow for uh, developer incentives. Because as of right now, we have no authority to provide developer incentives out of this district. Um, so could this be, um, could this be delayed for, um, for two weeks, it probably could be, but much beyond that, I think, is going to start impacting um, our ability to reach some sort of a, an agreement with this with this developer. And I'm not even sure that we're going to re be able to reach that agreement, you know, as it, as it is. Um, so, thank you, Commissioner Wolfgram. Thank you, Mr. Winzens. Um, I understand what you're saying, and I'm not referring to requirements at all. I remain concerned about the income insecure folks that are living within the boundaries of TID 8. I completely understand um, the issues that you're talking about. I personally believe it can be a both and and not an either or. And all I would ask, um, I personally, for instance, don't believe that it needs to be delayed. I mean, I can understand the reason for that, but if just simple language were included that affordability will be considered with any future development, that doesn't mean that you can't have a pure market value $3,000 a month um, development there, uh, but it doesn't mean that affordability cannot be considered so current residents are not displaced. Well, I, we all, yeah, we always consider affordability and, and the, the um, none of the parcels that we're talking about here would displace any residents. Um, block 7 is vacant, totally vacant. The railroad lot is a parking lot and the liner site is totally vacant. So none of these projects that we're talking about here 
would displace any residents within this district. Can I do a follow-up? Yes. But this is also about any future development in addition to those parcels as well, isn't it? Referring those, to? Those are the only redevelopment parcels remaining in this district. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Discussion from the commission? Thank you, Mr. Winsens. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us. It looks like we're past the discussion phase here, so I'll in, uh, I will call the question. All those in favor, say, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Peterson. Our discussion. <clears throat> Are we changing the word from of to to? Okay. Okay. It is. So I will call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. And so that item passes. Item number five is another tax incre incremental district question. It's a uh, for recommendation to the city council regarding tax incremental district number nine. Uh, Mr. Winsens. Thank you, uh, Chair Larson. Uh, this one should be much, uh, much easier. Uh, this is uh, an amendment, uh, the second amendment to tax incremental district uh, number nine, tax incremental district number nine, is located on the uh, uh, north, uh, north, northwest uh, portion of the community, otherwise referred to as the Gateway Business Park. Uh, within uh, this area on a parcel uh, immediately um, uh, across from uh, the old 3M building where our offices were located uh, for about a year, um, a, um, uh, a new um, distribution facility was constructed in this location on this parcel. Uh, unfortunately, uh, half of that parcel uh, actually um, it's, it was constructed actually across two separate parcels. Uh, one of those two parcels was located within tax incremental district number nine. The other one shown in green here was located outside of tax incremental district number nine. So we ha now have a building, uh, half of which is outside of the district and the other half is within the district. And the city assessor would like us to clean up the boundary uh, so that uh, that they don't have to figure out what half of the building is worth versus the other half of the building. So we are requesting an amendment to the boundary of tax incremental district number nine just to take in that green parcel uh, where that uh, distribution facility is located. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Winsens from the commission? Commissioner Peterson. Just for my own edification, looking on this, it, it didn't show up on here, but when I went online, I found it, and it's okay. the one you have up there. What does the gray area mean around? This, this area here? And yeah, this is outside, uh, outside the city of Eau Claire. Okay, and the same north and yeah. west. Yeah, that's all outside the city of Eau Claire. So the, the purple line on here is the, is the, are the city limits. Okay. And then this parcel is, is really connected by the by the right of way. Um, it's kind of a kind of a, a flag portion, uh, but the right of way along uh, along this road um, is uh, along Jeffers Road is outside the city and connects this connects this parcel. That's not Jeffers Road, but anyway. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Winsens? Thank you. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Um, are there any members of the public who came to speak on this item tonight? Anyone come to speak on item number nine? Number, I'm sorry, number five. All right. Uh, so at this point, we'll see if there's a motion. Commissioner Brenholm. I'll move approval. Is there a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Peterson. And again, if you guys could hang around just for a moment to sign the the motion. Um, <clears throat> any discussion on item number nine? A number, it's TID nine, item five. 
I see none. So I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes. Thank you, Mr. Winzens. Item number six is a public discussion for recommendation to city council uh, regarding an annexation at 1266 County Highway F. Mr. Petrie. I thought I had this one on my iPad, but I, I believe I wrote the report and I don't remember what it's about. So this is what happens when you go to Miami on vacation. Uh, the parcel is to be annexed uh, by the applicant. It's currently in the town of Whedon. Uh, it's actually in Chippewa County before you. Um, the applicant is here. Uh, I do know that we did not include an aerial photograph showing, so I did include this in our presentation tonight. It's the parcel that has a single family home on it currently. The applicant does own the parcel that's inside the city to the west and to the uh, west of the proposed parcel and also north of the development that you see, uh, the Aspen Ridge Drive would be extended up. So he's combining, potentially combining both parcels into a larger development. Um, this request would be presented by the staff to the council on Tuesday next week. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the commission? I see none, thank you. Is the applicant here? Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm again. I'm um, the, with the land surveying company. It's part of the annexation, and uh, yeah, Ryan hit it right on the head. It's that longer, um, that longer rectangular piece. That one right there. That's the part that we're um, in the annexation process with. So, I'll field any questions if anybody has any. Any questions from the commission? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? I'll Commissioner move Christopherson. I move to approve. I'll second. And Commissioner Wolf Graham. All right, any discussion? I see none. So, Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure at what, where this question would fall, but in an annex annexation, is there ever a notification of um, individuals living around that? Mr. Petrie. Uh, excellent question. No, it, there's not, but they will be notified of a rezoning. So when this gets annexed, potentially by city council next Tuesday, it will have a temporary zoning. It's called TR1A. Uh, and then uh, the applicant will request a rezoning, potentially to like R1 or R2 then the neighborhood will be notified. We only notify the city, the city clerk and the town clerk, and then the state of Wisconsin. All right, any other discussion? Okay, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Items seven through 14 are all related to one development. Um, I, I'm sorry, seven through 13 are all related to one development. So what we'll do is have one presentation for all these items and then bring them up each uh, for discussion and, and a vote. Mr. Petrie. Thank you, Mr. Chair again. So before you tonight, uh, like the Mr. Chairperson mentioned, is a preliminary plat and then we have six site plans. Uh, this is for SC Siderski uh, located on the far west side of Kane Road, uh, south of the North Crossing across from Menards Corporation. Aerial photograph is shown on the map. So the first item before you will be the preliminary plat. And that's for approval tonight for the SCS Eau Claire plat, 106.5 acres. This is the proposed plat, which has th potentially three phases as we'll go through in a, in a soon um, the preliminary plat shows 17 multifamily lots this was approved uh, by the council and the plan commission back in october of 2019 it is very similar to the general development plan that was approved this would be the next step in the process uh, a final site plan is before you with the first phase a developer's agreement 
through the engineering department will be reviewed at a later date, along with the final plat for the phase one. Uh, the plat um, has been re requested uh, utility easements by AT&T, Charter, and XL Energy. The stormwater ponds, as shown, would be retained by the City of Eau Claire, and there are seven outlots proposed. Staff would recommend approval of that request. There's a zoomed-in aerial. Uh, this is a contour showing the elevations. Now we'll just continue right into the site plans and the applicant does have a presentation as well this evening. Um, what I'll do is I'll go over the site plan individually and then if there's questions on those, we'll stop at that one and then I'll, I'll continue on uh, with the rest of them. So the next item on your agenda would be SP 2003. Uh, and that is the first proposed building, which is the community center by SC Sidersky. It's approximately 1.42 acres. Uh, here's the phasing plan that I mentioned earlier. Phase one is reviewed tonight. Phase two and phase three would be reviewed at a later date. So we're looking at lot one, phase, uh, phase one, lot one, site one. Here's the proposed uh, elevation of the community center. The floor plan, as noted in your rep report, uh, elevation showing the side in front with the garages and then the side elevation and rear. Here's the proposed site plan. The proposed site plan for lot one is this approximately 4,600 square foot building. This is for office maintenance, fitness center and community center. Uh, it also has a four car attached garage. This is consistent with the general development plan as all the site plans before you tonight are. Uh, again, the proposed elevations are shown they are proposing bicycle parking at this facility for the residents to be used. Also proposing 26 stalls for employee need and residents need. Uh, the site plan does show a variety of street trees. They show a, a variety of uh, foundation plantings. They also show a sidewalk on all sides. And then the retention pond outlet is shown to the east of the proposed site. Um, this is um, compatible and consistent with the general development plan like I mentioned. A pedestrian link uh, from the building should be added to the site plan uh, and the driveway is shown onto Christopher Drive, uh, the proposed street. Um, engineering report, grading and, dra grading and drainage is noted, public utilities, traffic and transit. They are proposing a potential future bus stop on the proposed site plan. Uh, with that, I think I'd be standing for any questions for the community center at this time. Any questions on uh, the community center? Commissioner Christofferson. Thank you. Um, Mr. Petrie, the question that I have is the um, lighting. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering in, um, as it's developed, because this is such a not developed area and almost rural, even though it's in the urban setting, what, what type of lighting do you, do you anticipate? Excellent question. Uh, I would turn that over to Ms. Ness with the developer's agreement. I do know the building will have wall packs and the applicant can confirm that, but the building in particular will have wall packs, but for the development, I would pass that to uh, Ms. Ness. Along the streets, we require that the intersections be lit. Um, when the blocks are greater than 500 feet, we have lighting in between the blocks um, along uh, the streets. I would look to the neighborhoods to the east and the west to uh, be similar to the lighting styles in those neighborhoods. Mr. Peterson. In in the, the staff letter, uh, you mentioned pedestrian link from the sidewalk in front of the building to the public sidewalk. Um, in looking at the site plan on page 18, I would highly recommend that they come out from the, the gap between the two handicapped parking spots and come straight out with the sidewalk there and then move the, the transit pad opposite that. It's just, there's gonna be no cars parked there, so it should be easy travel. Yep, makes sense. And the other comment, I guess, is maybe for the developer in their, their narrative, they say a three-stall garage and the site plan shows four-stall garage in there. 
their sketches. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on this particular section? Commissioner <coughs> Christofferson. Thank you. Um, the other question, it was, um, this is a repeated comment in each one of the presentations, but that the traffic plan is pending because that was one of the interests of the surrounding neighborhood. When is that anticipated? We actually have received the update to the traffic impact analysis. It's being reviewed by the city, the county, and the state at this time, and uh, we'll have recommendations uh, within the next couple of weeks, probably back to the developer. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? I see none. Oh, I just got Oh, something. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Commissioner uh, Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Petrie. The, um, I guess, you know, some discussion perhaps on the specifics of the um, pedestrian connection may be necessary later, but um, the, the patio area, uh, and maybe the applicant could describe it too, but I guess there's access from the building to the patio, obviously, that, but is there gonna be, is this patio gonna be enclosed or is it going to be, um, or is it gonna have some sort of railing around it or is it gonna be open to the, to the green space and how exactly is the green space gonna be utilized or if they're planning any sort of playground or something like that it was kind of one of my overarching questions, I guess. Yeah. Excellent question, uh, Mr. Grigert. I'm not 100% sure the applicant is here. Maybe what we'll do is when they get their presentation, that'd be an ex excellent follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, with that, we will have Mr. Petrie move on to the next one, yes. and then we'll have the developer come up at the end. Yep. Perfect. So we're moving on to lot two, site two, phase one. Before you tonight is two six unit apartments, single story, similar to across the street. Um, it, on the screens there are the elevations showing the attached garages, single story buildings. Um, the buildings are approximately uh, almost 10,000 square feet with each having a two car garage attached. The narrative notes that they're eight two bedrooms and four three bedrooms. The building elevations are shown, like I mentioned. The parking requirement is based on the number of bedroom count. They have 28 bedrooms, 24 stalls in the, drive, in the garage. They also are proposing some in the driveway for guests and uh, other cars. Bicycle parking would be allowed in the, uh, in the garages. Landscape plan shows street trees, foundation plantings, and evergreen plantings along Kane Road as approved of the general development plan. The street trees shall be um, determined at a later date. We're working with city staff and the developer to determine the best locations. Staff believes the evergreen plantings along Kane Road should be moved in farther uh, because of the underneath the power lines. Exterior lighting will be wall packs for each of the units. Uh, grading and drainage, again, is mentioned in your report along with public utilities, traffic, and the transit. Um, I think with that, I'll just keep moving forward now because uh, SP 2005 is very similar. That is just to the north of the proposed street along Kane Road on the corner. This too is uh, lot three, site three, phase one. Again, very similar to the SP uh, 2004. They have the two car garages. Um, again, the buildings are about 10,000 square feet in size. Um, floor plans are noted and um, this is showing the proposal. Again, the Kane Road evergreen planting should be probably moved in a little farther. This is showing the uh, right turn lane onto uh, Kane Road into the proposed development. Um, again, the bedroom count is the same. The parking is the same. The bicycle parking should be in the garage. Landscape plan, like I mentioned. Uh, grading and drainage, public utilities and traffic and transit all noted. Um, Moving forward, uh, SP 2006 is um, across the street from the last proposal. It's lot four, site four. This is approximately a 3.25 acres. Uh, here we're proposing three four unit apartments on the proposed future street. Again, consistent with the general development plan. 
this one, uh, the buildings are proposed at 4,300 square feet approximately. Uh, these are getting into the two-story buildings now. Um, some of the units have a two-car garage, some have a one-car garage. Um, the applicant does note that these are all two-bedroom uh, units for the proposal. This one gets into um, the trail being located uh, to the north of the proposal. They have sidewalk along the front, and then they have a trail uh, along the north with a retention area. Um, again, the parking requirement for this one would be 24 stalls. They are proposing 18 in the garage, and then the driveway would, would be suited for more. Uh, they are proposing street trees again um, and f foundation plantings. Um, grading and drainage, public utilities, traffic and transit are noted in your report along with the draft letter. Moving on. Let, to, let me pause for oh, just a moment. Go ahead. And check with the commission to see if we're, if this pace is okay with you guys or you have questions on on anything so far? Mr. Peterson. Are we going to be allowed at the end to ask questions of yeah. oh, yes. staff or developer? Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure we're not breezing through too quickly. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Petrie. Okay. Um, I don't know where I was, but uh, I think I'm on SP 2007, maybe. Uh, this is the proposed building. This is a true two story. Um, I think here is the elevations for it. This one is um, three, four units, uh, three, four, eight units, and three, 16 units. Um, so this is very similar to what we just looked at. Again, the two car garages and one car garages is all two bedrooms. This is getting into the bigger buildings now, attached garages again. Uh, another different building. This is, I believe, the 16 units, <clears throat> showing the elevations. Um, this development is a little different than the other ones because it has a mixture of de uh, buildings on one parcel. Um, the buildings would be a mixture of three, four units, like I mentioned. Uh, those buildings are 7,200 square feet with two bedrooms on the main level and two bedrooms upstairs, each having attached garages. Uh, the middle building is four four units with attached garages, and those are about 16,000 square feet approximately. And then the western building is three 16 units. This site plan's broken down into three, so it was a little hard to follow probably potentially for you guys. Um, but it does show it on the screen is this the proposed uh, development is uh, south of the on the map is shown here. Um, <clears throat> Again, the street trees would be um, potential working with staff. Uh, the drive aisles are four access points to the development. Um, again, in your report is a grading and drainage, public utilities and transit and traffic. And then moving on to um, lot six, uh, site six. This proposal has three 20 units, the, the biggest buildings that they are proposing with this phase on the screen, this one does not have the attached garages. Instead, it has the surface parking and detached garages as shown here. Um, the access, again, is to the west of the proposed street. Two access points, three buildings in a row um, with the detached garages in the middle. Um, this development is a mixture of 36 one-bedrooms and 24 two-bedrooms. A trail is shown on the I guess this would be to the e east and northeast. They are showing pedestrian connection to it, trail connection, and also pedestrian connection to the public sidewalk. Um, the parking is based on the number of bedrooms, which is 84, 117 stalls are proposed and consistent with the general development plan. Bicycle parking could be in the garage again, uh, landscape plan, as I mentioned before, grading and drainage, public utilities and traffic and transit. With that being said, that is the master plan for phase one, all six lots, all sites. Great, thank you. Any questions from the commission? Commissioner Christopherson. 
in the um, description, there was only one that I noticed, but I might have zoned out through there, that how many of those are actually completing in 2021? Is that all of phase one? Excellent question for the applicant. I'm not 100% sure their timing of this. Um, I do know they would like to get started in 2020. Um, like I mentioned before, though, this isn't the final step, unfortunately, for them. They all have to come back with a final plat and developer's agreement <laughs> that's approved by this commission and the city council. Any other questions for Mr. Petrie? Mr. Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Petrie, the, I guess one of the biggest challenges I had with trying to sift through all this was making sure we have the, the proper pedestrian connections from the public sidewalk to the doors of these buildings. And in some cases, as you get to the higher density buildings, it, the connectivity is greater in terms of to the actual doors. Um, in the lower density um, buildings, there's more of a, an expectation that a, a pedestrian go up the driveway. Um, so I guess in, in the city, um, from the planner's lens, I guess you could say, um, did you see any shortcomings in in any of any any of the residential buildings? Because I know you obviously noted one for the community center, but um, I guess I'm I guess I'm satisfied with it. But I just wanted to kind of get your perspective on on your lens on it. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent question. I believe that uh, lot one was addressed. Two and three and four, as you mentioned, are the smaller buildings, and they appear to be okay. Lot five and lot six are a little more challenging, just given the scale and the size of them. Now, I, I do know that lot six has direct access, and well, I guess and lot five, to the trail they're proposing as well. Um, Potentially, uh, the plan commission may just make that as a condition on lot five and six. I believe the applicant is proposing them. I just would make sure everyone's on the same page for lot five and six. I would just add that as a condition. Any other questions for Mr. Petrie? Thank you. And is the applicant here? Welcome. Thank you. I'm Jackie McElroy, Business Development Manager at SC Swiderski. Um, and thank you for consideration of our preliminary plat and our first six um, site plans. So, um, so just a disclaimer, um, I have a lot of 3D images in here and they're gonna help you better see the colors and then the different elevations of the buildings, but um, there might be some variation for the final um, buildings. So for the preliminary plat, as we mentioned, there's 17 lots and then there's the seven out lots. Um, right now for development, we are doing the first 15 lots um, and very similar to our general development plan that was approved, um, we have the breakout of the unit count, just a slight variation in the units and how the buildings were laid out. Um, so you've seen the preliminary plat. I have a few other images that might better show some of the things that we're talking about. So um, that kind of shows the numbering of the lots. And as I mentioned, we're doing the first 15 lots um, for development. Um, phase one is planned to start construction. We would like to start that this summer. The first buildings would open at the end of the year of 2020, and phase one should be completed with buildings all opened in 2021. And we do plan to continue through the site. So as we're still finishing phase one, we will be doing work in phase two so those buildings can open continuously. Um, but we did wanna finish up the locations that are closest to our neighbors on Keene Road. Um, we had some proposed names for the streets, so I'm sure we will um, hear feedback on those and the final approval on the street names. Um, as far as green space, when you're looking at the individual sites, it's very hard to see because there's lots of buildings on a very small plan. So we just prepared this image that kind of points out what the green space is on the site, as well as the stormwater facilities, um, and just kind of whited out the buildings and the roads. So as you can see, there's an abundance of green space. We're currently exploring how we will be using that, so there will be something on the site. Um, I think the most popular choice right now that has the most support is doing some kind of pickleball on the site. So that's something we're looking into, but you can see that there's an abundance throughout the site. Um, 
Another image is the walkways. So highlighted in green are the public sidewalks. So you can see where those connections are. And the red line is our trail. Um, so you can see we did add the connections that we were talking about on um, lots five and six. So people can get from inside the um, area out to that trail. But we also know that throughout the site, there's private roads. So on all of our other communities, people walk on those private roads. So these aren't the only locations that people can walk and make connections on that site. We just wanted to highlight the public sidewalks. They're very extensive throughout the site, as well as that trail. And then in blue, we have marked um, the locations of our mailboxes. So we're working with the postmaster, and there will be four of those mail sheds. So we wanted to point out those locations. Um, a few images for the site. So we do have a monument sign plan. So that's a, an image of that. Um, so you can see what that looks like, as well as all of our trash dumpsters will be enclosed with cedar fencing. So there's an image of that. And I know when we were here previously, there was some concern about the garages that face um, the North Crossing Road. So um, here's a better 3D rendering to give you a more realistic view of that. Um, we do put the stone around the exterior. Um, it's very nicely finished. And then there will be a tree line with a tree every 20 feet. Um, here's another view of what that looks like. And then a view that you would see from um, the North Crossing across the grass to that garage. So hopefully that's a better rendition because I know there were some concerns about having that garage in that location. Um, that is what our mail shed looks like. So we will have four of those on the site. And those locations are marked there. So we have laid that out with the postmaster and it fits kind of the route that they would like to use throughout the site. And then I'll go into each individual lot. So um, location of lot one is the community center. And we did get staff's report. So I know our engineering company will come up and show you some changes we made to make that connection for that sidewalk on lot one from our community room. So um, there will be an entrance from the community room to the patio. And that will just be a flat patio that will walk out to the grass space. So we don't know what will be there. We envision leaving it open so there can be beanbag tournaments, that kind of stuff. But because we do have our property managers officing out of that location, we anticipate using that area. And so we kind of just wanted to keep it open there instead of doing some kind of playground. Um, but we do understand there's a sidewalk in front of the building, so making that connection was what staff noted, so we will be able to do that to the sidewalk that's on the main road. And so in lot one, it's 1.42 acres, as Ryan explained. And here's some better 3D images of the community room that show the true colors. Um, one thing that I wanted to note is throughout the site, all of our buildings will have the same roof shingles. Um, the color is weatherwood, so there's that consistency. But every building has some different colors that are complementary. We are also carrying the white windows and trim throughout the site. So again, there's some consistency there. But it definitely has a nice neighborhood feel with lots of colors being utilized. So there's the side um, view, the back view, and then the garage view. And um, I think that will be updated with the garage stall. So it is four garage stalls. That was correct. Um, lot two, we go into our first buildings that are the Bedford buildings. Um, that is what that site plan looks like. And there are two of those buildings on the site. Here are some better renderings of the color of that building. And I think there was a notation about the driveway. And it does taper off at the end. So the measurement across the main part of the driveway is 42 feet. But it tapers. So um, where it goes into the road, it is the 30 feet that's required. There's the back of the patio homes. Lot three, we see two more of those buildings. So those are some more images of that building. Lot four, we go into our first two-story building. And that's the coloring of that. All of the buildings actually do have sidewalks to the front door. So you will park on the driveway. Probably the tenants living there might park in the garage and enter through the garage. But there is sidewalks up to the front doors. The back of that building. Lot five is our biggest lot. So we have the three different building styles there. Um, so it is broken apart into the sections, as Ryan noted. And those are all the measurements in your packet. So we have this four-unit scout building again. Um, this is our eight-unit building. And you can see the sidewalks here better in this rendering. Has the garages. And then our bigger building, the 16-unit building. And those also have sidewalks up to the front doors. There you can see. And finally, lot six are our biggest buildings on the site. These are our 20-unit buildings. 
And that's the rendering, and you can see the sidewalks again there. And that's what I have for images, and we are open for questions, and also our engineering companies here as well. Thank you. Commissioner Peterson. On lot four, site four, um, at the north end of the cul-de-sac, the sidewalk ends at the cul-de-sac, and the trail takes off from the west end of the cul-de-sac. Can you make a connection between that sidewalk and the trail? Rather than have them walk through the roadway in the cul-de-sac? Yes. Okay. And on light two, lot two, site two, you go with the aerial view, the drainage pond. Where does the drainage go from that pond? Does it go to the north along the west side of Cane Road, or does it cross Cane Road to the east? I'll let Sean answer that. Uh, good evening. My name is Sean Bohan, engineer with Advanced Engineering Concepts. Um, the exhibit I have in front of you ends up showing all the stormwater facilities. Um, there's more than just seven. There's seven outlots, but those are uh, uh, stormwater facilities that we're looking to have the city take over because they are draining um, public infrastructure, the roads. But there's also some internal um, stormwater facilities that only be privately owned. Um, so the area that, that uh, you're asking would end up being um, this stormwater facility. Yeah. And what I end up having shown is I do end up having, I know I apologize that it's small scale, um, but I end up having basically outlot one would flow into outlot two. That would end up actually coming up and going into outlot three, okay. which would end up being to the north of that. And then that's where it would discharge um, into the ditch along Cane Road. And it would be on the west side of Cane Road um, it would end up flowing to the north and then it would hit the culvert that would end up crossing right here. Okay. So we do not have anything um, that's developed and impervious that ends up going to this culvert right here where they ended up having some issues um, on the east side. Yeah, they had um, some flooding problems in a basement yep. and a condo there. Yes. Yeah. And then just to kind of touch um, on the remaining portion of it, so um, we basically end up having three locations where this, where the entire site is going to outlet. We end up having the, the one that I just discussed. Um, it ends up taking in basically lot one, um, lot two, three, four, a portion of five, and a portion of six. Um, and then it will actually take another portion of future phase three portions. So it's basically, I, I took the boundary, comes like this, and ends up going. It's about 26, 26 and a half acres. Um, the second one, uh, which ends up being phase two and three, ends up being a, a, a bigger area, like 59 acres, I believe. And it's a series of stormwater facilities that you can kind of end up seeing, you know, coming down through these areas. And it's actually gonna um, be behind the buildings that abut 312. And then that water will actually end up going to the east also. And that okay. will dump into um, the ditch along Highway 312. That also will end up going to this culvert. So we are not taking any of that area and taking it to the existing pond that they've had some issues with, um, with the outlet, that type of thing. Um, we are also going to be, and I've talked with uh, Ms. Ness about this, about providing a, a, an extra uh, um, storm pipe from their pond to be able to get into that area and, and discharge into our stormwater facilities and be able to get out also, because I think what's happened right now is um, it wasn't completed with the, with the stormwater facilities, um, at least the outlets. Um, so this will end up allowing conveyance um, through our site and through our stormwater facilities um, going to the Cane Road culvert. So, any questions on this Yes, sir, one more comment. Mr. Yes. Um, this is phase one, and, and you plan on doing phase two and phase three kind of following after one another. I would highly recommend building the east-west road past the community center along lot five, site five, and the north-south road along the west side of lot five, site five, and lot six, site six, 
on the west side of that at the same time you develop those two in phase one just so you have a second access into those areas so otherwise everything's going to come right past you know the uh, lot four site four and then i have a personal question on the mail sheds you're going to have four mail sheds so if i live in any one of these apartments or buildings i have to go to a mail shed to get my mail Right, and that is kind of a common, we have that on all of our sites, so we have one location that has 200 units that are using the same mail shed, so it seems to work well. People on their way home just pull right up to it, or when they're leaving the development, pull up to their mail shed, and there'll be a place for them to pull over, and they get their mail and their packages also from the Postal Service in that box. So in my lifetime, I've gone from a mailbox on my front porch. <laughs> right. I'm now, I'm now retired. I go across the street to a mailbox, and now I'm going to have to get and walk to a mail drop or drive to a mail drop in this configuration. Right, and we did propose a few other options. There's some of the um, smaller buildings that we asked if they could have a different kind of mail service, but the postmaster did want these mail sheds. That's easiest for them, and that's all that they would allow. It's the first time I've ever heard of that. Oh. So, and we don't really you. seem to get any feedback. Like I said, all of our sites do have these mail sheds, and people seem to think they're satisfactory. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Mr. Gregor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Ms. McElroy. Um, so when people have larger packages, presumably they just get a note and it'll be at the community center or how does that work for the, for the mail? Within the mail shed, there's different size for parcels, um, boxes. So then you get a key and it'll say your parcel's in box A and then you use that key to open that parcel box. Unless something is really large, right? <laughs> right, and other people that center. don't deliver through the postal service, they will deliver to the units. Um, all of our units have their individual doors. There's no common entrances on the building, so they do deliver to the individual units. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. There was just one other item that I wanted to discuss, and this was what we have actually on our engineering plans um, since we ended up making the submittal. So we do end up having that connection shown um, through the, the ADA striping. We had to end up moving the ADA stalls uh, further to the west just because of some grade differences, but it's basically um, what we have spoken about earlier and stuff, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for the engineer? Because I had a, a question for Mr. Bohan. Right. Yeah. For Mr. Bohan? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Bohan, the, can you bring up that image again, um, the pedestrian connection oh. to the community center, please? Sure. I guess one other option, and I really don't know exactly what is best, but um, it seems like it would make sense to have the connection on the east side of the lot so you don't have to cross a lot at all um, for, a, for a pedestrian connection from the sidewalk to the, from the public sidewalk to the building. But, um, and then I also was wondering <clears throat> the, uh, the size of the, of the transit pad doesn't seem to go all the way to the curb as it should in, in the way the transit pads are usually done and then the the bike uh, rack pad doesn't actually connect directly with the the sidewalk in front of the building so I guess uh, you know making those specific connections I guess wanted to get your thoughts on that well as far as the connection the pedestrian connection to the city sidewalk um, we put it in this location just because it, it drops off um, going to the east. So I'm not able to have an ADA accessible route if I try to end up bringing it from this direction because I'm down probably about three more feet on the sidewalk is. Um, so that's why we ended up having to actually shift everything further to the west to be working with the grades. Um, as far as the, the other two items, I mean, we'll cer certainly end up working with transit on the size. We just, um, we just put a pad in there um, just to kind of as a, as a holder. Um, I don't even believe it's being maybe even put in at this time until 
um, they actually specifically have a route. Um, and, the, and the bike racks and stuff like that will certainly make sure that they're right behind the sidewalk and everything for a hard surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions? I see none. Thank, Thank you. you. So we will uh, bring each of these before us one at a time. Um, so we are on item number seven, which is approval by the plan commission for preliminary plat P220, Cane Road and North uh, Crossing. So this is the, the preliminary plat. Is there a motion? Commissioner Brenholt. I'll move approval. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Christofferson. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And number seven passes. Number eight is the, uh, the site plan for the community center. Is there a motion to approve that? I'll move approval. Commissioner Wolfgram, is there a second? I'll Commissioner second. Obeyed. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And number eight passes. Number nine is the site plan for uh, SP2204, which is two six-unit apartments. Is there a motion for approval? I move to approve. Commissioner Gregor. I'll second. Commissioner Brenholt. Uh, any discussion? And we'll, uh, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And number nine passes. Number 10 is for a site plan for uh, SP 2005, two six unit apartments. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move approval. Mr. Wolfgram. I second. Mr. Gregor. All those, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And number 10 passes. Number 11 is uh, SP 2006 site plan for three four unit apartments. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Peterson. Um, I'd like to make that sidewalk connection between that and the trail. When do I do that with the motion? Okay, or? Uh, you can, you can, uh, you can, um, Approve with that condition. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve uh, this site plan with the connection between the sidewalk and the trail at the cul-de-sac on the north end of this lot. Okay. And is there a second? I second. Commissioner Gregor. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And number 10 passes. Number. I'm sorry, it was, that was number 11. Yep. So number 12 is SP 2007, site plan for three four unit, four eight unit, and three 16 unit buildings. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner I'll move, Brennell. I'll move approval. Is there a second? Commissioner Seymour. S second. Uh, any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The number 12 passes. And this is our final one. Uh, number 13, SP 2008, three 20 unit apartments. Is there a motion to approve? Commissioner Peterson. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Commissioner. I second. Gregor. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
And number 12 passes. Congratulations. 13, number 13 passes. Congratulations. Uh, number 14 on the item uh, agenda is the revised work program for 2020. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just want to provide to you uh, it's the last last items in your uh, agenda packet, last three pages. This is the uh, Plan Commission work program for this year uh, as updated at your last meeting. Uh, the yellow highlighted areas are those that are added. Uh, there's some uh, stricken text or language as well, just to clarify certain things. Just real briefly, uh, in terms of legislative, again, just a reminder, those are things that will come before you for uh, consideration and or approval. Uh, the third one on there reference, references Net Zero Energy Construction Guide. Uh, just some additional language there to uh, further clarify that uh, from our Associate Planner, Ned Noel. Uh, the fourth item then, bottom of, page of that first page, uh, the Affordable Housing Advisory Commission is more uh, accurately referred to now as the Housing Opportunities Commission. That is actually before the City Council for their consideration as well as uh, public input and comment next week. So again, just changing that uh, terminology there. Um, again, pending that uh, consideration at City Council next week. Uh, the next page, the second item there, talks about downtown parking standards. Uh, it seemed based on conversation discussion at the last meeting that it was more appropriate to refer to just parking standards in general. Uh, there'll be some references more specifically to downtown parking standards and parking standards related to affordable housing, but wanted to uh, mention that as well. And also uh, reference um, the uh, landscape manual and there are certain aspects of the landscape manual uh, that uh, would relate to uh, parking standards as well. So just wanted to include that clarification and clarify too that for kind of incorporating all those items into one, uh, we're looking kind of later this year before that would get done. Uh, block seven, as you heard from Mr. Winzenz even tonight, uh, there it is remains vacant, but there's some interest uh, pending certain other considerations, uh, not the, the least being the uh, TID plan uh, modifications. So we just added a uh, timeline to that in terms of just later this year. Broke that out, uh, block seven and liner site being two separate sites could possibly also include uh, the railroad lot, but um, for now those are kind of ones that are more specific from the conference plan and from your work plan last year. So just broke out liner site as its own item. And then finally, uh, top of the last page with that, uh, neighborhood planning, just um, wanted to make sure that that was included. That was based on discussion with the, the commission here at the last meeting as well. Uh, there's uh, in the current um, operating budget uh, opportunity to look at an additional associate planner staff person uh, second half of this year and one other uh, anticipated uh, kind of priority areas would be to look at neighborhood planning so just wanted to without specifying a specific neighborhood in particular uh, want to mention that neighborhood planning continues and that this year will not be an off year for neighborhood plans, even though we did essentially kick off the year with the third ward neighborhood plan at the last meeting, but we'll continue that work here throughout uh, the rest of the year. So uh, again, certainly this is a, a fluid document. Uh, don't want to just lock everything into stone um, here tonight, but did want to provide those updates. We'll clean this up formatting wise, but if there's any other items we need to add, uh, Want to do so before we get too far into the year. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. Uh, any code compliance items to discuss? Future agenda items? Commissioner, or Commissioner, Mr. Allen. <laughs> One of these days, I'll get. Uh, I'll get a promotion. Um, 
thank you for hearing me with that. But uh, and the corresponding raise, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, did want to again pointing back to that uh, Housing Opportunities Commission. Uh, again, just timing wise, and there's a lot of interest in hearing more about that, what that entails, and uh, any work that they would do that would relate to the Planning Commission. So, uh, again, pending uh, outcomes from City Council meeting next week, uh, we'll come back with additional discussion item on uh, kind of affordable housing kind of updates uh, in the next uh, next few meetings here. So, just wanted to get that on your radar that not necessarily a specific agenda item other than just a additional discussion item coming up. Okay, thank you. Any discussion about that? Um, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, without objection, we are adjourned. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, PO Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support 